and welcome back to Dozzy's Television Workshop, where today uh, we're going to take a look inside this errant ECC85 valve uh, that gave us so many problems in our recent uh, leak uh, trough line stereo repair. So this valve has got a broken getter, halo getter in there, and it's rattling around and it caused uh, all manner of problems in our receiver. So I thought, well, it's never going to be any good as a valve anymore. So I'm just going to break it open and see what makes it tick. Now it's got two triode sections in there. Each side is a single separate valve separated by a screen. So effectively there are two triodes in here. Um, so yeah, I just thought we'd uh, open it up and see what happens. So to that end, I've got a size seven tapping stick. Um, I'm just gonna wrap it in there so I don't get glass everywhere. Give it a bop. I think that's pretty much bopped. Uh, yes, I can hear broken glass. Uh -oh. I made a bit of a mess of that, didn't I, really? Uh, um, you should now notice that the silver top um, will be losing its silvering very quickly. Uh, yeah, you can see it's starting to change colour there. Can you see that on the camera? I shall zoom in in post. That's the getter that gave us all the problems where it's come away from the top of the triode assembly. I shouldn't have hit it so hard, should I? <laughs> you can see that gettering now has gone completely white as the barium has reacted with the air. So yeah, there you go. Let's uh, show you the getter that had fallen off previously and it was still inside the envelope. Of course, if I ever needed a valve that was good hanging down, I'd have been all right. There we go. Uh, I'm just going to get a pair of gloves and then we're going to get that apart, if I can. Yeah, there's a slight smell of burning cap. Not electrical cap, but the sort of cap gun, like gunpowder. Um, I think that's the smell of the barium burning up. It's probably going to do me no favours at all, but um, there we go. Right, gloves donned, because I don't want to cut myself more than anything else. But there we go. So these two sort of star shaped things here those are our mica insulators or mica or some sort of fibrous material god i hope it's not asbestos i would doubt it um yeah it's mica and then the various gray structures that's our anodes and you can see there's one straight down the middle there and that's the shield that separates the two separate triodes inside the valve. They share common heater, but that's it. Right, let's see if we can take the top, uh, top insulator away. Yeah, it's slightly kinked over. I don't think that's where I hit it. I think that's just how it was made. Hmm. I wonder if I make a, an incision by the plate there. Just try and move that away. Ah, it's breaking up a bit. First time it's been exposed to air since the 60s, I should think. And I do the same there. I'm only going to do one one side, I think, because both sides are identical. It's definitely mica, look. You can see it shining away there. Could have used a clean cloth, couldn't I? Right, so there we have... There's the separating plate. And this part here is the anode. So let me just see if I can... What I need to do is really cut the pins off from the base, don't I? Let me just see if I can move that bit of glass out of the way. Everybody back. What a complete fail. Horrible. 
Right, that has removed the wrong bit of glass. It's that bit I want to remove. There we go. Okay, just going to snip the legs off and see if we can get this part of the assembly out. So this would have all been welded when it was made. There are various videos of the Mullard Valve Factory in Blackburn making these things. If I cut both halves away, we should be able to get at it. Oh! Now you see I've just tugged that. That, I'll put it on my glove so you should be able to see it. That is our heater and it's a layer of tungsten wire inside and it's insulated with clay so it can glow and warm up the cathode. Right, now let's see if we can extract the anode from here. can't believe in all the years I've been doing this I've never thought to take one apart before. So the filament is insulated, or the heater is insulated from the cathode by that um, there we are, by that, by that clay. Okay, now the anode there, you see this grey metal, so all the bit, all the action is occurring inside here. So let's see if we can't. There we go. That's the anode away, and all it is is a little box section of some form of metal. I don't honestly pretend to know that much about it. And then here, let me get right in, and then probably zoom in in post. Can you see those very fine wires over that sort of central cylinder? Well, that central cylinder is the cathode and that's uh, boiling off our election electrons once it's been heated by the filament or the heater. And that very fine wire mesh there between those two gold parts, that's our grid. So our grid is our, our, our very fine, almost like spiral, wound round those two pillars. And that's controlling the flow of electrons between the cathode in the middle and our anode box section on the outside. And obviously if there was any air in there, all those electrons would be banging into the air and not doing anything. Hence, it's a vacuum tube. So there we go. I wonder if we can light that bit of filament that's left. <laughs> you know I'm going to try. Let me carefully put that lot out of the way. See if we can get on there with a the power supply and just just put a little current through it, see if we can get it to glow. It won't last very long in air, but uh, busting to try. So this valve was originally rated for 6.3 volts. We shall give it a lot less than that. Um, right. I'm going to want a couple of micro hooks really, aren't I? one. That looks to be the connection there. I think I can just get on that one there. I had to dim the lights for this one, I think. So uh, there we are. Is that in shot? It is. Right, workshop light going off. Uh, the camera lights have come on, so we've got some base illumination on. I am drawing current. So let's, we're at 0.61 of a volt. There's two volts, three. Oh, we can just start seeing that 
just starting to glow a little in the middle, it won't last long in air. There it goes. And you can see that sort of clay starting to glow a little. In fact, if I blow on it, yes, it, it dims down. That's at 4.6 volts. There we go. That's 5 volts. You see how much brighter it's glowing in air than they do in the thing. So there is there is our 6.3 volts. It's lasting quite well actually. You can see it's all concentrated the heat in just one point there. Whereas normally, oh, there it is. Got open circuit, little puff of smoke. Had enough. So yeah, wouldn't have lasted long in air. But that warms up inside that tube um, and normally heats the cathode and then emission occurs. Anyway, that was interesting. And now I've got a load of glass to clear up. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Click like, subscribe, do all that rubbish, and I'll see you very soon here on Doz's Television Workshop. Cheers now. Bye.